This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at Soko K Fudu Set, and behind me here is the Polestar 2. This is called the single motor standard range. So it has a slightly smaller battery and his front wheel drive. So hopefully it's more efficient. And we're going to do 1000 km challenge because I want to know, you pay a lower price for this car and how fast is it for a proper long trip? So um, uh, I actually haven't done the range test yet. So I don't know exactly how much we have, but we have 64 kilowatt hour there. So I guess maybe right under 60. Well, actually we will find out. Maybe about 60 kilowatt hour net capacity. So it looks just like the, the regular, what, the, the bigger, more expensive Polestar. It has the awesome lights. It has the Polestar up there. So we've been charged now to 97%. Wait, I mean, oh yeah, yeah. New update. Now the Polestar 2 will preheat the battery before arriving at the fast charger we navigate to. And we'll also show you how fast you're charging. Thumbs up to Polestar for updating the cars. So we're going to start exactly at 11 tonight. I'm doing this to avoid too much rain. If we start tomorrow, there'll be some massive rain on the south. So there's, yeah. So I actually don't know where we'll stop yet, but most likely it will be Strömstad. Wait, can we just say, hey Google, navigate to Circle K Grunt. Uh, <laughs> okay. That Navigating was... to Southwark Street. No. Hey Google. What? Navigate to Ionity Strömstad. Navigating to Ionic Systems. Okay, 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 all right, all right, all right. Let's just find it manually instead. It's uh, somewhere around here. Okay, I'll find it, I'll find it. We've been driving for, uh, well, I don't know how long, but 54 kilometers so far. And you see we're down to 79%. Consumption is remarkably low, 199 watt hour per kilometer. I heard that they've done some updates. Um, you see, if you go here, uh, there is a range assistant. This is the latest uh, version, version 1.7. And supposedly, if you turn on eco climate, the car will do some heat scavenging to try to save energy. Uh, and then, as a compensation, it might be a little bit colder. So just have it warm enough, 21. I might have to crank it up to 22. We'll see. But it should be good. We should be saving energy now. And also, this single motor should be more uh, efficient. So right now, the car estimates that we can make it over to speculate, 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 speculate. With 7%, that would be amazing if we can make it there. Because even the, even the Kia EV6, which has a bigger battery, was kind of struggling to get it made it there barely if i remember correctly so <laughs> let's see if the pole star 2 can make it there okay we're gonna do a little distance check here at uh, schweinsun so uh usually when i come here we're supposed to have 114 kilometers you see it's right there right about there and you can see here that yeah it is 114 100, yeah, yeah, so this is, oh, freaking, it's auto steer, man, yeah. So that means that we have Swedish precision, yeah. So we can do nine and nine. Oh, that's good. We are now charging at Hobby. We came here with about 20%, a little bit. Here you see the stats so far. Oh, not too bad, 230 consumption, okay. But look, the car now shows charging speed and we're getting 116 kilowatt. That's not too bad. Yeah, uh, okay. We're supposed to get this until 40%, so let's see. Okay, but my next stop, uh, since I'm stopped here, then I don't have to stop at, the, wait, huh? Why does it look so weird now? I don't have to stop at um, at Speculate, 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 Speculate. So I'm gonna go straight to Valberg. Wait, how do we? Wait, uh, uh huh. Okay, wait. Huh? 
Is this overview? Okay, okay, huh? okay, that's weird. I'm not used to this, sorry. Look like a noob. So because if you want to zoom out, if you want to see an overview, I can do this, I guess. Yeah, see? But then you don't see any information about the route, so you have to recenter. And then you see that it's 166 km and we can't make it there yet, but we'll chart for a little bit. This is the first time I'm here. I always hammer past this spot. Um, you see E6 is right there. So there is a little bit of a detour to get here, uh, actually around two minutes. So not right by the highway, but at least over here we have four Eon chargers. So there is a high chance that they will be available when you get here. I think maybe people tend to go to Ionity instead. So maybe in the future I will stop here more often. So we have gas station over there, open 24-7, UK Kyoto. And uh, we'll just uh, camp here for a bit, I guess. We've been charging for 20 minutes. We're getting close to 70%. Uh, it went fast until 40%. We got over 100, uh, what is it, 100, almost 120 kilowatt. Then it starts stepping down to 95 kilowatt. And now we're down to 62 kilowatt. But I calculated that we have around 65. No, 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 wait, sorry. We have around 56.5 kilowatt hour only. Um, and that, based on that one, I calculated I need 65% to reach Vardabai. 65%, I also checked uh, against Abedaru Planner. Abedaru Planner claims that I need 61%. So that means I'm more confident on my calculation of 65%. So if we go, yeah, and then, th and then this car, I guess Google then estimates we'll buy with 3%. So let's just go for 70% in about a couple of minutes and then we should be fine. We have a little bit margin also. But this means over 20 minute charging stop here. Oh. past uh, Gothenburg now and uh, yes I'm down to 14% it's kind of 13% Ooh, going kind of deep but uh, I, sh I think we should be fine I'm, I'm confident we can make it there because the car now tells me I will arrive with 2% but you see I'm gonna show you something weird here okay we will arrive with 2% in 31 km if you click here you will then see the the route overview and stuff here, the car says we will arrive with 1%. <laughs> Inconsistency for the win. Look at that. 2%? 1%? Well, well, well. <laughs> oh, shit. This is freaking scary. We are in the 110 zone. The car told me I would have 1% at Weilberg. I have 1% now. We are not at Weibag yet. We are 2.4 kilometers away from Weibag. I was trusting the navigation. Mm, shit. Next time, don't trust the navigation. I had to slow down now. I turn off HVAC. We are almost there though, but the, the power limit appeared for a little bit and then it disappeared. So I don't want to take any risk. So we just slow down a bit. We lose a little bit of... Uh, I, I calculated already. We must have lost around two minutes. So I guess no big deal. There you go, Weibag. Oh, shit. Stop there. We made it here. Look, I look like Hulk. Ooh, me mad at fossil. Oh, okay, we're here at Ionti Wildback. So, oh man. Um, for some reason, we're not getting the maximum speed yet, but I think it's because the voltage is too low. But this is fine. Okay, we are riding on the 100 plus kilowatt wave. So, um, Yes, now we're gonna check it out. Oh, the screen went off. 
Do you want to low what? Okay, stuff like this annoys me. We are charging. The car should know that we are charging. Why is it bugging the user that we should find a charging station? This is bad, <laughs> bad user experience. <laughs> okay, no, you don't want to find a charging station. We are already charging here. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, the next stop, I want to try navigation now. So we're going to try this. Okay, let me see. Uh, let me adjust there a bit. Okay. Hey, Google, navigate to Ionity. I can't find driving directions to your destination. Tough. Okay. Hey, Google. Navigate to Ionity. I can't find driving directions to your destination. Okay, whatever. I give up. But, 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 okay. Ionity. Ionity. You see, we see spec. No, 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 no. Ionity. Uh, it's called uh, Helsingborg. He oh, it found it. Noise. Yeah, you see, it detects it as a very fast charger, which means that when we go there, it will preheat the, the Akku before. Okay, good. All right. But now it will tell me that I won't make it there, but that's fine. We're just going to sit and wait a bit. No, wait, wait, dude, stop bugging me about this thing. No, nine. Okay, we're good, we're good. We've been charging for over 30 minutes and now suddenly, okay, it was at 60 kilowatt for the longest time. Now it dropped to 50 kilowatt. This is the time for us to leave now. All right. But it did pay off to, to ride on the 60 kilowatt wave because uh, actually right now, I don't know how much we will ride it. We will see. Um, yeah, let's go for 75% and then we go. Wow. We are now on the concrete surface near Falkenberg, you can see the wind turbines to the left and right. Remember, remember, these are wind turbines, not windmills. Windmills is the grind shit. Wind turbines are for generating electricity. But you can hear how noisy it is, because uh, I always pointed this out before that the Polestar 2 has good wind noise protection, but road noise is actually kind of bad. And this surface here, really proves how uh, bad the, the road uh, noise part is compared to for example uh, NEO ES8. This, this surface here is the concrete surface and usually it's loud and uncomfortable but the air suspension here just floats over this road like, like butter. It's just so silky smooth or actually uh, even the the, the Kia EV6 wasn't that noisy over here. We are now climbing up the Hollandsausen and uh, you know, I charged to 76%. We are down to 25% now. And in the beginning when I left the, the Ionity charger, the car estimated that I would arrive with 18%. And now the car says I will arrive at 5%. So I figured it out after three legs now. Uh, the, this car will estimate how much you need based on that you drive exactly at the speed limit. Tesla, however, was like this in the beginning, but te Tesla has been evolving. So Tesla will then figure out how fast you are actually driving. And then it will estimate and give you a better estimation. Even the EQC I tried, also gave a damn good estimation even as I was hammering a little bit so um, I think this is uh, it has some room for improvement for uh, Polestar to uh, yeah kind of yeah yeah okay we are now at the end point Helsingborg we came here with two percent left ninja calculation by me always um, we have to deduct three minutes total now. Two minutes because of the traffic. But I started charging now. But then, by mistake, the cable here bumped into the unlock cable button here. I pointed out this before that it's really easy if you, yeah, you know, I'm just going to show you now. What you could do is that if you do something like this and you accidentally press that button with your knuckle or something. Oh, let's not stay there. If you just accidentally press that button, you will stop charging. 
Where, where did it go now? Here, you will stop charging. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, it was my mistake. You can say, no, it's the car's fault. Well, but okay, I let it be my mistake. So we did that three minutes. Uh, at least now we are getting 110 kilowatts. So I charge to 76% and I, so I, I spent 74% getting here, which means I need more because in the return we have slight headwind so i need almost 80 well no don't tell me that i have low range when i'm charging stop it we've been charging for almost half an hour this has been uh, every time now when we charge today we charge for half an hour so um yeah i guess that's the name of the game we are almost good to go i need around 75 percent 76 maybe and then it starts throttling now. So yeah, we shouldn't stay here too long. So over here, by the way, this gas station is open, but it says not Luca, which means, I'm gonna show you, I can zoom in. I think you can see it. Not Luca. The, the doors are closed, but you can go, just like in Germany, you have to order from the, from the window somewhere. So, well, but I'm almost good to go anyway. I'm gonna go to Weilberg if I want to get some food. We are back at Ionity uh, Weilberg. Okay, the plan first was that I was going to charge just enough to go to speculate, speculate, speculate. But then I had a bad stomach and I had to go to the restroom. But then I kept charging. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip that one and go back to Hobie, the place we charged at the first stop. And I calculate, okay, we barely made it here when we had, where well, we're 70%. So it means that now, okay, I'm charged a little bit more and then we can go there <laughs> with full speed. So again, half an hour stop here. Okay, whatever. We skip charges, which is also good because we then cut down on overhead because it actually takes some time to exit the highway, get over here and then plug it in and handshake. And yeah, look at that ass. Mm. on our charging up. This is second to last charging stop. We came here with 8%. So at this time, I don't have to stay here too long because the next stop will be the last stop, which is at Svinesundsparken. We have Fortum chargers over there. Um, yeah, only 84 kilometers. And then we jump another 120 back home. So I'm gonna show you now. Uh, these are ABB chargers. Now you see in the daylight what it looks like the noisy ABB chargers with some noisy fans here. <laughs> what the heck is wrong here? No, it's, it, it, nothing is wrong. So, it's co-financed by the European Union. Yeah, danke schön. But I guess in order to get uh, support like this, they have to be open for everyone. So that's why Tesla superchargers cannot get uh, funding from EU. <laughs> so yeah. Now we just wait, um, not too long. I think I'm going to the restroom and that's it. I only have time for a quick restroom break. Over here, uh, we have Rasta restaurant, but uh, maybe next time, we'll see, next time. And also I can show that, okay, you see this place is called, you can see on the, on the logo there, let me show you, there, there, there. Zoom in. Swedes, they call it OKQ8. Um, not OKQ8, but the Q8 supposedly means Q, 
It's like a slang for Kuwait, which is where the oil comes from. I think that's how it is. Some sweet can explain to me. Yeah. So that's that's why they, that they call it Uko Kuotte. <laughs> yeah, normally I go to Circle K, but now I go to Kuotte. Wow, this is kind of weird. Because normally when I pass through here, it would be night and I don't see sheet. But today I actually see some landscape. But okay, so uh, we have now done. Uh, wow, this is so weird. I just topped up to 52, no, 51 percent, and we are already down to 38 <laughs> percent. The percent goes down really quick. So as always, I have the passport ready for the border control, and here we have the wind turbines again. Noise, not windmills, wind turbines. We are now charging at Svinnesundsparken, but for some reason, I'm not getting 120 kilowatt. It's only 99. Uh, this charger is supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be 150 kilowatt. But I like this. I just learned that we have one high power charger here. There is plenty of chargers over there. But this, you see, you see this roundabout? When I did 1000 kilometer challenge in the Norway route, I would drive here and then turn back and go that way when the right, where the white car went. So this is actually pretty cool that we have a, we have a pit stop right here. <laughs> but okay, um, I checked now. The average speed up until this point is 90 kilometers per hour, which means that with this charging stop, we might be able to do it within 11 and a half hour, which is that we can match the old time of the bigger battery. But of course, once we test the bigger battery, they have increased the charging speed. So the bigger battery will be faster, but that means that this car will actually get a good time. Amazing, right? But based on the consumption now, it also seems like the front wheel drive according to my calculation, it's around 20 to 30 watt hour per kilometer more efficient. Yeah, <laughs> but okay. So now a quick pit stop, and then I go to the gas station and grab some food and go to the restroom. Um, I think we have to deduct one minute because um, uh, I had to restart the charging um, because the charge limit, I accidentally set charge limit to 40%. And then it reached it and then it dis and then it stopped because you see i'm gonna show you now again i keep just just by well uh, like by accident you see you see how easy you you can easily change charge limit i almost don't touch it and you you change charge limit in tesla for example you have to enter a screen in order to change charge limit here it's just so easy to accidentally set it and i set it to 40 percent so is it the user error or is it uh a car error i don't know but I i'm going to deduct one minute so we have now seven minutes total we are on the move again the last run so we are now at well maybe i maybe can show you here it's more detail we're not 918 kilometers <laughs> but the time is what is the time now do we have clock there no we don't have clock there okay we are clock here 9 41 so uh, we have to deduct seven minutes so yeah okay we're getting close to the 11 hour mark but we still have to drive another 80 kilometers so right it's uh saturday morning so we shouldn't have too much traffic going into oslo now we have to do the countdown 9991 9992993994 Nine 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 five. Nine 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 six. 11.15 <laughs> All right, all right We are back in Oslo now. So yes, this was awesome. You know, I set my expectation kind of low because I knew this car had Smaller battery. So I was thinking faster than 12 hours would be great Well, we did it in 11 hours and 15 minutes, which is actually faster than previous Polestar 2 with a bigger battery but why was the Polestar 2 back then slower? Well, 
from what I remember, it cold gate a little bit, which means that it didn't charge that fast initially until the battery heated up. So, uh, and what else was it? Yeah, um, the charging curve might not be the best, and also the consumption was a bit high with that Polestar. Uh, but with this car now, the, it has a latest update, um, the 1.7 version. Uh, and with that one, supposedly Polestar claims that they have now preheating before fast charging, as long as you navigate to a, to a fast charger. I did that today, every time. And also, so I didn't call get a lot. You guys saw it, it was instant fast every time. And also they have improved the charging curve, even on this small battery that came up later. And they have claimed to also improve the efficiency, something about, I don't know, the motors or something, uh, inverter logic, I don't know. But those three th things together actually make this car faster than the old Polestar. But I'm not done there because I'm going to test the, the, the what the old, I mean, I'm going to test the, the dual motor long range in just two days now. I will pick it up and I will also run some tests. Some I will do con uh, consumption test. I don't have to measure the battery because I think that's the same battery capacity. And I will also check again charging speed because they have improved it. So yes, uh, but if you look at the table now and compare against other cars in this, what, the car likes to all the time. <laughs> Uh, compare against other cars. Okay, I try to compare against cars in the same price range and you see that actually the made in China Model 3 uh, standard range plus was faster. Yeah, efficiency is king. But again, not everyone wants a Tesla. I, I spoke to a guy before I did 1000 kilometer challenge tonight and he said that he was happy that he saw my video and he bought a Polestar 2 and he liked the looks of it and he didn't like the looks of Tesla. Fair enough, but um, okay, and then uh, other cars, maybe the EQA, but the EQA was remarkably fast. It was efficient, okay, it was summer, yeah, that's true, but 1020, that is, <laughs> the EQA was charging like a boss and it was fairly efficient, okay, fair enough what about that one. What about, the, but then, nah, maybe EQA is not too fair, it's, it's like an SUV crossover, yeah, yeah. but ID3 is fair comparison, 1045, all right, it was summer, Consumption was quite good on the on the ID3. Um, so yeah, this one is half an hour slower, but uh, I guess in summer we could be maybe down to 11 hours. That's pretty close to the ID3. Uh, what else is it uh, we can compare against? Um, uh, yeah, well, I think that's it really, pretty much. Yeah, Ko Ko Kona, Kona. We were faster than Kona. <laughs> 11.30 for Kona, yeah. Uh, it was a little bit cold for the for the Kona also similar temperature actually uh, for for me but Kona was more efficient but Kona charged slower so I think the downside with this Polestar is that okay it seems to be more efficient than the dual motor Polestar but it's not really there with the with Tesla and the Korean well the classic Korean cars at least when it comes to efficiency so I would love to see it maybe even more efficient to be closer to EQA or uh, iX3 which are uh, just front wheel drive or rear wheel drive not all wheel drive but other than that though comfortable car it has a things like few bugs or whatever that I don't like with the software that can be fixed as for the uh, interior nice seats feels a bit sweaty good side support in the seats. Um, I feel like it's a bit hard for me. I prefer slightly softer seats, but that's my taste. Center control, I always thought it, it, it still is a bit cramped. I prefer having it more open like MEB cars or Tesla or the Korean cars also like EV6, but you know, that's just me. But overall though, I would say that the, even though the infotainment has a little bit of quirks and here and there, the infotainment system is still better than most other cars I've tried. But it can be improved even further. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.